So I'm walking down the street. This guy comes up to me. He says, hey, ugly. Hey, ugly. Give me 20 bucks. Which I don't know if that's a very persuasive thing, but he does it to a lot of people, you know. Somebody must have given him 20 bucks or he wouldn't be doing this anymore. Anyways, nothing compares to the weirdness of people in my hometown. Come from a small town where there was just, there was weird people everywhere. There was this one house I used to walk by where there was a, a mannequin in the living room window looking out. And uh, the guy who lived there, he went through a pretty bad divorce, obviously. And on the mannequin, he had uh, his ex-wife's wedding dress. And he always played uh, Deep Purple, Smoke on the Water, really loud. And he had uh, a thing for that song by uh, Iron Butterfly. In a God of the Vida, baby, won't you take my hand? 17 original minute version. He always had that playing too, those two things. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, yeah. I don't know what to say, but I would like to talk to him all these years later and find out how he's doing. It was really weird and uh, nobody could do anything about it. I mean, it's not like he broke the law or something being that weird. I bet there are guys who would drive around town thinking like, all right, which house are we going to break into now? They probably saw the mannequin in the window and heard Deep Purple playing and thought, okay, not that guy. So he didn't need a home security system or anything. He kind of had his own haunted house right there, you know. I used to work in a haunted house, you know that? And uh, it's a weird job. First thing I had to do when I got to work was I'd go through the haunted house and make sure all the monsters still worked. Because sometimes uh, there's guys who go through the haunted houses and stuff and they punch out the monsters. So you have to make sure everything's working. You know, you go in there with a the toolbox, you can fix all the broken monsters that have been punched out. I knew the guy who did it. Like I didn't know him personally, but he was a paying customer. So he'd come through and uh, he would walk through a doorway and at the bottom of the doorway, there's this little light. You hardly know it's there with your eyes, but you walk through the beam of light and uh, that makes a big air pump, let a lot of air out, and that moves the monster. So there was a guy on a bed, and he would come out from the bed. He would go about five feet out there. You go through the beam, then the big air pump pushes him through the air, this little tiny guy in the bed. Might have been three feet tall. And that's, that's you know, they had this all measured out so that you would go through the door, and you wouldn't have the little guy in the bed jump out so fast and hard that he would hit you or anything, because that could cause legal problems. But people would walk in really slowly, and then you hear this sound like, Aah! and the guy would fly out of the bed and scare them. But there were guys who would figure this out. Then they would stand there and they would punch the guy out. So I'd have to go in every morning and fix him, you know. <laughs> Pretty funny, eh? Ah, but they're all paying customers, so I had to let them through. Anyways, there's a lot of weird people who go to haunted houses. Like there's uh, couples that would come in and they would, they'd be making out, like kissing and all that stuff. You know, you know that stuff, right? Hopefully you do. And they would do it right beside the uh, guy in the electric chair who'd get electrocuted and the lights would flash and uh, his, his body would move around and all that. And then when they come out, they'd say, okay, well, thanks for letting us uh, go through again. You know, there's nothing, there's, there's, there's just nothing better than uh, terrified making out, you know, like when you're really scared, you're making out, saves your relationship, you know that? So I would think things like, well, you know, I want to be a good guy and help people with their relationships and everything. So, okay, fine. Well, whatever, man. <laughs> But there was the guy who punched out the monsters, and then one day he comes out and he says, Monsters, where do they come from? They come from Ireland. And then they come out of a cave, and they get on a pirate ship, and they sail the ocean, and they get off at Pittsburgh, and then they join the Broiler Makers Union. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll always remember for the rest of my life, you know. 
One day, there were three women that, that decided to go through the haunted castle, and uh, only one of them spoke English. They were uh, like three women from a small rural village in China somewhere, and they wanted to do something that would cause a lot of excitement and, you know, memories that they would never forget. So they were too scared to go through the uh, rest of the haunted house once the little guy in the bed jumped out and just jumped out at them. So I said, okay, well, that's all right. I'll close the door and I'll walk through with you, eh? So one of these one of these three women, she grabbed my wrists with both her hands and she shut her eyes and she just screamed the whole way through. She screamed right in my face. It took us 15 minutes to get through all five rooms. And then when I got out, I thought, wow, you know, I've never had anyone scream in my face like that. Is that what people hope for on their wedding night? Nah. Oh boy. But sometimes what happens in a haunted house is people go in there and they just weren't ready for how scary it really is. So they're standing there and you can watch them on the security cam. After about 20 minutes of somebody just standing there in the dark, frozen with fear, I would uh, basically shut the door and I'd go in and get them out, you know, because they might have a heart attack or something. It's scary. What shocked me was when little kids would come out of the haunted house and they'd be like, that's not even scary. Hey, that wasn't even scary. And their parents would be terrified. You got to wonder what's going on in that kid's life. Did he grow up watching horror movies all the time? Apparently his parents didn't. Is that the effect of the internet on people? I hope not. Because, uh, you know, kids should be scared of things that are scary. But anyways, getting back to this man, the mannequin man, I'll call him. The mannequin man of Pinocchio. When I was working at the haunted house, I thought about this guy and where he might be emotionally. I thought, you know what? Maybe he was living in a haunted house of his own emotions. It's kind of like this. You go through the first door of a haunted house. And once you're through the door, you can't go back. You can't go back because there's a doorknob on the first door that you go through. And once you're through, the door shuts and there's no doorknob to go back out. That's kind of how you get your money's worth, you know. You pay to be scared, so you're going to be scared. But let's say emotionally... This happened to him. He went through some kind of traumatic event, like his divorce. And uh, it created an emotional house of haunted emotions. He was scared all the time as a result. Emotionally stuck. And just like somebody who's standing in the haunted house, and you watch them on the security camera, they can't go forward and they can't go backwards. What if he was like that emotionally? He's like, I can't go back. Nobody can go back in time and fix things. When he looked back, it created fear. And when he looked forward, maybe he felt that what lies behind the next door in my life is more terrifying than what was at the first door in the haunted house. Emotionally stuck, paralyzed, afraid to look forward, unable to go backward, and just living in a state of living in a state of terror. Huh? I mean, I'm kind of assuming that modern day psychology is kind of like this: a person is traumatized, but. Somebody can help walk them through all these emotions that are so awful and so terrifying and so painful. It's kind of like somebody standing in the haunted house. They're midway through and they're stuck. So what you can do is you turn on all the lights and you walk them through and tell them it's okay. On an emotional level, maybe that's what therapists do. They take you through those scary moments but they do it with the lights on so you can see that all the monsters and all the things you're terrified of are really nothing to be afraid of. 
Once you walk through your emotions with clarity, then you can finally come out of the final door in the haunted house and do it with closure, you know? Emotional closure, that is. The last door in the haunted house always has a doorknob on it because that's the last one that you go through. Uh, emotionally, there must be a time for people who have been through such terrible things, so terrible that they put a mannequin in the window with their ex-wife's wedding dress on it. They, they must go through a time, a moment, where they've, they've gone through all the scary thoughts and feelings they've walked through, no matter how terrifying it was, and a therapist helped them see clearly what was going on. And then they open the final door in the haunted house, and they walk out. And it's as if they now have closure, emotional closure. They don't have to go back and, and rethink everything. There's no new thoughts. There's no new feelings. They have closure. They're done with that stage in their life. So hopefully, Mr. Mannequin Man has done that by now. I mean, I laughed when I first saw it because it was so weird. But I knew, I knew that, oh, something terribly wrong happened there, and it's not that funny. Of course, you know, even a guy as weird as Mannequin Man, he could go on one of those dating sites and meet somebody, you know. There's lots of weird people out there on dating sites, I'm told. There's probably a woman out there somewhere who would see his profile and think, you know what? This is the man that I've been waiting for my whole life. I'm going to go to his house. I'm going to kick that mannequin right out of the window. And I'm going to put that wedding dress on myself. And, and he can play smoke on the water anytime he wants. He can play in the Gata de Vida 17-minute iron butterfly version anytime. Because he's going to love me for who I am. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot. There's something to be said for people who are that weird. Because they've transcended everything. They've gone beyond the usual issues. And they have a wonderful way of like working through life because they're beyond all norms. So they don't have all the normal problems that other people have. They may have other problems, weird problems, but, uh, you know, never underestimate really far out people. They're creative. They're emotional. They're... They're the people who bring you the Twilight Zone and other amazing projects, you know. I'm sure if you knew like David Lynch, he's probably really far out, but who would be a better neighbor than him, right? right? So, Mr. Mannequin Man, if you're out there, I hope you found closure. I hope you went through the haunted house of scary emotions and somebody turned the light on and showed you that it's, it's all okay now. And you went through the final door, and now you're out. Free emotional closure for you. No going back, no being stuck, no thinking, I can't move forward in life because it's too painful to go forward, but I can't go backward. I'll just stand here stuck with a mannequin in the window and my ex-wife's wedding dress on it. No, it's not time for smoke on the water. It's time, time to walk through the haunted house of emotions, Mr. Mannequin Man. There's help for everybody out there. Well, anyways, that was just on my mind today. So I thought I'd tell you all about it. Hope you're well. Hope life is good for you. Uh -huh. Okay. See you. Bye.